Hi friends, now we can discuss the Caldor Hicks criterion, which is also known as compensation principle. Nicholas Caldor was the first economist to give a welfare criterion based on the compensation principle. It helps to measure the welfare implications of a movement in either direction on the contract curve. That is a case when some person better off and some others worse off. According to Caldo's welfare criterion, if a certain change in economic organization or policy makes some per person better off and others worse off, then that change will increase social welfare if those who gain from the change could compensate the losers and is still better off than before. This criterion is known as Caldor Hicks criterion because both economists developed the criterion at the same time. Hicks was given this criterion from the loser's point of view, while Caldor has formulated this criterion from the gainer's point of view. That is, gainers can compensate the losers and is still better off. And the Hicks says that the losers can be compensated by the gainers and is still better off like that. Therefore, since two criteria are really the same, they are called Caldor Hicks criterion. Caldor Hicks criterion can be explained with the help of utility possibility curve. Utility possibility curve depicts different combinations of utilities by the two individuals by consuming two commodities. Now, suppose the initial situation is shown by the point Q. Now, as a result of a policy change, the individuals move from point Q to point T. The point T indicates that B's utility has increased much while A's utility has decreased compared to the point Q. So, individual B better off and individual A worse off. Therefore, this situation cannot be evaluated by using Pareto's optimality criterion. Now, it can be possible to evaluate by using the Caldor-Hicks criterion. Caldor-Hicks criterion states that this change is an improvement in welfare if the gainer can compensate the loser and is still better off. Now, we can see that point T is on the utility possibility curve. Therefore, through the reallocation of income, it is possible to move from point T to point R or any other point on the utility possibility curve. When we are moving from point T to point R, A's utility the individual A's utility remains the initial level, but still individual B's utility is higher than that of point Q. That is, after compensating the loser A, the gainer B is still better off. Therefore, according to Caldor Hicks criterion, the movement from Q to point T indicates improvement in welfare. Now, we can also explain change in social welfare as a result of the adoption of a new policy which will lead to the shift of utility possibility curve. 
Suppose the initial situation is represented by the point Q which lies on the utility possibility curve DE. Now as a result of a policy change, the utility possibility curve shifts rightward which indicates growth of welfare or higher welfare. And suppose now the point is at R. We can notice the situation of point R where the individual A's utility has increased much compared to the point Q while the utility level of B has decreased than that of Q. Now at point R, individual B is the loser while individual A is the gainer. Since R is on the point utility possibility curve, it is possible to move from point R to point S or any other point. At point S, individual B's utility also increased somewhat, while individual A's utility is also increased. Thus, through a reallocation of income, it is possible to increase the utility of both persons. Therefore, a movement from Q to R represents improvement in welfare according to Caldor Hicks Compensation Principle. Now we can conclude here. Thank you.